Okay, hello everyone. I'm going to try capture a launch tray. I just want to show you a few things. This glider uses an RDT. In this case, it's a Leo Bodner RDT. Very good little system. Very light and small. You can see that the actual uh, the RDT board is right there. It just poked into the top of the fuselage. There's a little antenna. This is a sub micro servo. I'm going to be stocking these at hummingbirdmodelproducts.com very soon. I got an order in. I'm waiting for them to arrive. Six millimeters wide, weighs like 1.5 grams. Really nice little servos. They don't have a lot of torque, so you have to use a mousetrap mechanism. This little bit of wire here goes through a pivot. And then I've got a bit of pole elastic, this orange elastic. That's what holds the DT line, which is wrapped around the boom here. You can see it wrapped around there. So that prevents the wing from popping up. Holds it firm against the boom. And then the DT is activated by some more pole elastic to the bottom here. This has got my new pivot through the fuselage pivot design for uh, activating the, the pop forward wing. So that's that. The RDT unit for, the, for, the, um, for the, the transmitter is this guy here. Red button is for RDT, the black button is for resetting the servo. But generally I'm very happy with this system. I also have a, a Ken Bauer system which I've used for years and years. And that's also a great system. Uh, Overall, I think Leo's is like it's a little bit smaller and lighter, um, but they both work fine. The, you know, the, the smaller one is perfect for this glider because it's a little bit smaller than a typical larger tip launch glider. Uh, I wanted to say another thing. I've been uh, I've shifted to using gardening glove with the sticky rubber texture on it. I used to use uh, sandpaper glued to the tips. Downside of that is that, well, first of all, you have a big piece of sandpaper on the tip, so it adds weight, which you have to counterbalance with more weight on this tip, and so on and so forth. Um, the other probably worst thing about sandpaper grip is that uh, it wears out your skin. So I was actually having problems where I would come out for a session and be flying for a few hours, and I had to stop because the skin on my fingertips was worn away on the sandpaper. Uh, and if I didn't stop, it was going to eventually wear through to yeah, through to blood vessels and start to bleed. <laughs> and uh, I wanted to be able to fly you know, in a couple of days time because it was a calm weather window. And uh, so I had to stop so my skin could regrow. I actually started taping up my fingers for that. And, and so that's when I switched to this glove. And it has so far been pretty good. Um, but you have to make sure you keep a good grip on the airplane. And you know, my launches have been uh, less than perfect the last few tries. So we'll see if I can do a better one this time. Finally a decent launch. Air is not great, but uh, that launch was good and high. I remembered to hold on to the airplane. That's... Oh, am I going to fly into the light pole? Oh, those light poles have claimed uh, some uh, Casualties. I think I've broken uh, maybe four or five times now in several hundred flights flying into light poles, and when it crashes around the light pole, it usually comes down on this uh, tarmac here, and these lodges don't like it. And neither do wings, and also you dent your leading edge, and so on and so forth. All right, that was a decent launch. Hopefully, it proves instructive. Thanks for watching. Okay, so I'm going to show you how I uh, rig the glider after it's been DT'd. I've reset the servo, so you can see that the little head of the servo here is set there. Here's my little uh, mouse trap arm, so I'm going to set that underneath the head of the servo, the servo arm. Then uh, pop the wing down. You can see that the the elastic, the um, the pivot arm is operating with the pole elastic pulling on it. And the pole elastic, I just drilled a hole right through the end of that. So the pole elastic goes through that hole and there's a knot in a little slot there. Okay, so push the wing down, make sure it's seated against the boom. Drop the, uh, the line over the boom. Pull it around, around the uh, adjustment screw. 
and back to I'm using pole elastic instead of a spring here hooks it onto the whoops that came loose put that underneath there voila you can see that uh, now it's all hooked up and I'm gonna go make another launch I'm not sure my launches are maybe not perfect right now because I'm sort of mixed between the heavier airplane and this light airplane. I need to relax more when I throw the small one. But decent height. Not anything, no lift really. DT the game because of the trees. Okay, flying a Gold Rush 24 slash 26. So finally gotten this thing trimmed out. Flies pretty well. Give it a launch. See the transition is basically perfect, no stall. This air is pretty neutral, it comes down in something like a minute or so. Maybe a little bit of light lift around, you can see it bubbles a bit. But I mean the, there's no very little breeze and uh, obviously the cloud cover results in less thermal activity. Going back towards us now. And there you go, DT done landing. Okay, gonna do another video launch. Here we go. Beautiful transition. There's so a little drift right now that basically the model stays almost overhead. I just can walk after it. You can see there's a little bit of turbulence. The drift coming from behind me is coming through a whole series of buildings and trees. So the field here has a bit of sort of large scale, gentle turbulence right now. When it gets breezier, it gets harder to fly in this field just because there's so much more turbulence. Over the guys playing cricket here in the middle of the Parker's piece. Just DT it so that it wouldn't go back into the cricketers. Okay, so I'm gonna go and try and catch her the launch. Uh, the model might fly out of the frame, but at least you'll see the motion that I'm doing to get the airplane up in the air. As usual, good transition, decent height. The air happens to be decent right now, so it's, uh, you see it's bubbling around in some very, very light, gentle lift. It's actually holding height. So I'm just going to stay under it here. Hopefully I can make it over the cricketers. Oh, a little bit of turbulence there. You can see it recover as well. And caught it.